So a very good afternoon, everyone from New Delhi. And thank you very much for joining us for today's virtual panel discussion on the review of ASEAN India FTA, identifying the potentials and challenges for deepening India and Indonesia economic engagement. I would like to acknowledge that we have around 100 participants registered with us for this discussion today, which not only come from Indonesia and Indo and India, but also from other ASEAN countries, as well as other parts of the world. And these participants come from various backgrounds, from governments, business associations, chamber of commerce, as well as research center. And this event is jointly organized by the Indonesian Embassy in New Delhi, in collaboration with the ASEAN India Center mm. at the Research and Information System for Developing Countries, or AICRIS, as well as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia. And as the program indicates, we have a comprehensive lineup of speakers representing the government, academics, as well as industry from India and Indonesia. Therefore, our discussion will not only cover the trade and economic related aspects, but also the geopolitical aspects. And our discussion today will be led by Dr. Prabir Day, who is professor and coordinator of the AICRIS. So to start this, this event, uh, now I invite Mr. Masni Eriza, Deputy Chief of Mission and Charge d'Affaires of the Indonesian Embassy in New Delhi to deliver his remarks. Please, sir, the screen is yours. Thank you, Buani. Mr. Vishwas Vidu Sapkal, Joint Secretary, South and the Pacific of the Ministry of External Affairs of India. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, Dr. Prabir Day, Professor and Coordinator of the ASEAN India Center at Research and Information System for Developing Countries in New Delhi. Ibu Dina Kurniasari, Director of ASEAN Negotiations of the Ministry of Trade of the Republic of Indonesia. Ms. Indu Nair, Director of Foreign Trade of the Ministry of Commerce of In and Industry of India. Dr. Lina Alexandra, Senior Researcher, Department of International Relations, Relations Center for Strategic and International Studies in Jakarta. And Mr. Pranav Kumar, Head of International Trade, Confederation of Indian Industry, New Delhi. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to all of you. I am pleased to welcome you all to the panel discussion on the review of ASEAN India FTA, identifying the potentials and challenges for deepening Indonesia-India economic engagement. First of all, I would like to thank ASEAN India Center at the Research and Information System for Developing Countries in New Delhi for partnering with us, the United Embassy in New Delhi, in organizing today's panel discussion. India and ASEAN share a deep, robust, and multifaceted relationship, building upon the synergies between the ASEAN outlook on Indo-Pacific and India's the Indo-Pacific Oceans initiatives. The leaders of ASEAN and India adopted a joint statement on the Indo-Pacific at the 18th ASEAN-India Summit on 28th of October 2021 to promote peace and cooperation in the region. Strengthening this partnership remains the goal of dialogue partnership between India and ASEAN. The economic dimension of the partnership requires a review of the free trade agreement. The, chairs, uh, the chairman's statement of the ASEAN India Summit, among others, mentioned the review of the ASEAN India Trade and Goods Agreement, or ITGA, to enhance the utilization and effective implementation of the ASEAN India free trade area. That is important since, since India is not uh, a party of the RCEP. It is, in, it is therefore in the interest of India and ASEAN that the FTA needs to be updated and balanced to contribute to the development of resilient supply chains between India and ASEAN. Distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen, India and ASEAN trade is falling over the last three years from 97 billion US dollars in 2018 to 79 billion in 2020. In the first half of 2021, it is only 42 billion US dollars. While we are fully aware that the pandemic, it still could be considered as a culprit of this not so encouraging number, we also believe that a reordering of the FTA and a better utilization of it could lead to expanded trade, trade particularly 
through new supply chains. On the bilateral front, India is Indonesia's top five trading partner, while India, Indonesia is India's ninth largest trading partner, with a total trade recorded at close to 14.2 billion US dollars in 2020. For India and Indonesia's size and diversity, this figure clearly has not reflected the full potentials yet. Both countries need to have a more diversified basket of goods and services to take the economic partnership to a new level and reach 50 billion US dollars bilateral trade in 2025 as aspired by our two leaders. It is of course in our best interest that every effort to boost up trade and investment should not be spared. By the end of 2020, India and Indonesia have established the Working Group on Trade and Investment to start the discussion on the preferential agreement between India and Indonesia. Due to the extensive opportunities and sectors for economic engagement between us, I believe the economic bilateral engagement should cover not only trade and goods, but also services and investment. I do believe that by participating in this panel discussion, we are in the right place and the right time because I am sure this virtual discussion will not only actively deliberate on various issues to enhance bilateral ties between Indonesia and India, mindful of existing collaboration in all levels between those two countries, but also come up with recommendations based on the lessons learned from AIFTA, which serve as takeaways both for the review and anticipate stumbling blocks, issues, and catalysts during the review, both from the economic and geopolitical perspectives. To conclude, dear panelists, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you all a very successful discussion and I thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for your wonderful remarks. And next, I would like to invite Joint Secretary South and Indo-Pacific, Ministry of External Affairs, Government of India, Mr. Fishwas Vidu Sapkal to deliver his remarks. Please, sir, the screen is yours. Uh, Excellency, Mr. Uh, Masni Iriza, the child DFS of uh, Embassy of uh, Republic of Indonesia, uh, Mr. Prabide uh, from AIC, Ms. Dina uh, Kurnisari uh, from uh, Director from ASEAN Negotiations from Ministry of Trade and uh, uh, of uh, Indonesia. Uh, uh, Ms. Indunayar, Director from uh, Ministry of Commerce and uh, the Industry from India. Dr. Lina Alexandra, uh, researcher from Zaka. And uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Pranav Kumar uh, uh, from CIA head. Uh, uh, all the distinguished participants in the, in the forum uh, and, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm delighted to join uh, here today in these discussions being hosted by uh, Embassy, of India, uh, Embassy of Indonesia in New Delhi. Uh, this is a very a timely event, one can say, considering that uh, today we have just completed one month uh, since the 18th India ASEAN summit uh, held on uh, October 28th uh, uh, 20, uh, in, in 2021. Uh, at the summit also, there was a substantial focus on economic pillar of uh, ASEAN-India cooperation in the discussions among the leaders. The pandemic obviously provides the backdrop for how most countries approach both their economic policies and their global outlook. Now, the last two years, uh, we have witnessed that there is a serious disruption in our supply chains which has impacted our manufacturing, affected our trade, and very typically ruined up many service sectors. These developments have not just altered various dimensions of our day-to-day -day businesses, uh, they have even shaped our way of life. The present global situation provides an immediate context for our closer regional economic cooperation. Economic and trade cooperation form a really important pillar of ASEAN-India strategic partnership. In 1992, India's total trade with ASEAN was less than $5 billion. And now in 30 years, ASEAN has become a 
India's fourth largest trading partner. Uh, India ASEAN bilateral trade had reached all-time high uh, US dollar 97 billion in 2018-19, but due to impact of COVID, it is now at uh, 78 billion dollars in 2020 and 21. Uh, these figures, of course, do not do justice to the potential uh, that is exist between India and ASEAN for trade. Enhancing our economic and trade cooperation will remain always an uh, area of focus when we are now entering in a 30th year of uh, ASEAN-India partnership in 2022. ASEAN-India free trade area came into existence in 2010, almost 10 years ago. With the changing global economic and commercial landscape, it is failed by India and ASEAN side. That time is now ripe for reviewing the Aitiga, uh, that is uh, ASEAN-India trade in goods, uh, to attune to the needs of the present day. It is important that going forward, we work towards greater trade and economic cooperation between our two sides. An important endeavor in this regard would be early review of Aitiga. We should look at completing this process expeditiously to make the agreement a trade facilitative, user-friendly, uh, with contemporary and streamlined customs and regulatory procedures. Another potential focus area to strengthen our trade and economic uh, relations would be enhancing the two-way flow of information between, between India and ASEAN. There are various sectoral dialogues mechanisms that exist between India and ASEAN, uh, and then they are excellent conduit for the same. We need to look at conventional, as well as innovative mechanisms to promote our trade and economic cooperation. The policymakers in India and ASEAN countries must work together to create a conducive environment that would encourage our business communities to build the, these complementaries between India and ASEAN economies. We have to find together ways for accelerating information and expertise exchange, as well as awareness of opportunities in various sectors for our business community. This would also require active relations and cooperation between our Chamber of Commerce and regular exchanges of business delegations. This would also require active relations and cooperation uh, between other uh, various uh, stakeholders. Effective use of existing ASEAN India mechanisms in this regards, like ASEAN India Business Council, AIBC, uh, set up in 2003 would go a long way and uh, promoting business and networking. Our countries have benefited from the vast expansion of uh, trade, investment, and economic cooperation in the wake of globalization. But there is a need for this globalization led development to be equitable across countries. The socioeconomic goals can be promoted through sub regional cooperation, which pays special attention to the needs of less developed areas in the region. In this context, India attaches the greatest importance to the Initiative for ASEAN Integration, IAI, especially under Mekong-Ganga cooperation. Connectivity is a vital area which directly affects the pace of trade and economic relations between our two sides. ASEAN and India share land and maritime borders, and there is a great potential for enhancing connectivity through land, air, and the sea. We envision connectivity with the region in very broad terms, including physical, economic, and people-to-people -people connectivity. This can offer a great opportunity uh, for our trade and uh, business community. Another potential area for enhancing our uh, economic cooperation is working together for diversification of a global value chain a need felt acutely in the COVID times. Supply chain disruptions also raise nat uh, natural concerns about long-term reliability and resilience. Whether it is tourism or travel, mobility or offshoring, the value of multiplicity was realized more than ever before. And consequently, there has been a greater emphasis on diversified and resilient supply chain. India's campaign for Atmanibra Bharat or a self-reliant India resonates with our quest to become a democratic and trustworthy partner for global 
industrial resilience. It is important that we work together within the ASEAN global value diverse and put greater premium on trust and transparency, resilience and reliability, and also on choices and redundancy. The strengthening of ASEAN India trade mechanisms is bound to play a significant role in enhancing India Indonesia trade partnerships. India and Indonesia, uh, we are uh, comprehensive strategic partners with uh, millennia old civilization ties. The Bali Yatra uh, or uh, Voyage to Bali uh, festival, which is still celebrated in Odisha, is testimony to our uh, common maritime history and trade ties today. Indonesia is India's second largest trade partner in the ASEAN region. Our leaders have set the target of enhancing our bilateral trade to uh, $50 billion by 2025. Geographical proximity, large size of market, strong economic complementaries, and uh, various other things offer immense potential to further expand our trade relationship. Recently, at the 18th ASEAN India Summit held in October 2021, India and ASEAN have signed a joint statement for cooperation in AOIP, ASEAN Outlook on Indo-Pacific, uh, for peace, stability, and prosperity in the region. Under this joint statement, India and Indonesia can look at further strengthening our comprehensive strategic partnership through exploring opportunities in the economic, commercial, and connectivity sector, complementing AOIP and IPY, Indo-Pacific Oceans Initiative. I hope the discussions today will generate new ideas and provide a good opportunity for policymakers from India and ASEAN countries to further discuss ways to strengthen India, Indonesia, and India ASEAN economic relations. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, sir, for your very inspiring remarks. And before I hand over to Dr. Prabirde, let me invite participants who would like to post questions or comments to the panelists to type them in the Q&A box throughout our discussion. My colleague, Mr. Gustav Sirait from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Jakarta will later take up your question and convey it to the panelists during the Q&A session. So without further ado, let me give the screen to Dr. Prabirde to lead the discussion. Thank you. You are still muted. Sorry, doctor. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Annie, for uh, organizing the event. And I, I thank um, External Affairs Ministry uh, in, in Delhi, uh, Mr. Sapkal in particular, and the Indonesian uh, Deputy High Commissioner, uh, Deputy Chief of Mission in, in Delhi. Uh, and uh, all the speakers, uh, participants who listening uh, this very important webinar, Review of ASEAN India FTA. Uh, J.S. Sapkal Sar, he reminded us that we completed one month exactly. Uh, this is where, you know, we, we are very much on track to pick up the, what the leaders have left for us for discussion and coming up with the new ideas and out of box ideas in particular. So today's webinar, it is a review of ASEAN in India FT, and there is a subtitle. Uh, subtitle is that uh, identifying the potentials and challenges for deepening India-Indonesia economic engagements. If you recall, uh, we have completed a decade. You know, 1st January 2010, we started with FTA. So free trade area came in place 1st January 2010, and then what was that time, uh, our total trade with ASEAN and India? Uh, remind you that 1st January 2010 was the date of implementation. Before that, it took about almost about seven years for intense negotiations. And in 1st January, when we, we launched this free trade area between ASEAN and India, uh, the total trade was something around $44 billion at current price. And it reached a peak you know, in the history of ASEAN and India bilateral trade soon after the agreement signed about 97 billion in 2018-19, just one year before the COVID outbreak. And uh, we see that another change in happening is that the gap between ASEAN 
total and India in trade in goods it is declining. Uh, the new thing, the, what we see with witness both from India and ASEAN sort of production networks. I won't say the full um, production networks of value chain running through a market driven ethics, market driven business. Um, but we see a change which was not there before the FTA signed. But FTA, as you know, this is not a zero sum game. It is a positive. And if you ask any economist, you know, they will tell, tell they will never, never tell you that the FTA will lead to a surplus region or a lead to a deficit region. They'll always tell you what, that FTA can give you a benefit advantages. If you are in a deficit zone, it can make you in surplus zone provided you monitor, you control the free trade agreement. As you know all that, um, that the many of the ASEAN countries, the 10 ASEAN members and their dialogue partners include an India, we face a uh, spaghetti ball or noodle ball or FTA fatigues, you know. And there are many studies and discussions happen in the last 10, 12 years. There is a need for consolidation. So mega regionals, that's what came in. And these are purely not just economics or business. There are lots of politics, strategy, security, those are also important. So when we look at uh, any kind of a regional trading arrangements, we also factor in non-economic issues, traditional security, non-traditional security, uh, strategic aspects, political aspects. You cannot just leave them aside. So, so those FTA, which has been done pretty well in terms of promoting inter-regional trade, private sector investments, people-to-people -people relations, the one which comes foremost in our mind is the European Union, and then ASEAN certainly. But you know, these are certainly not a kind of a you know, static thing. So there is a rise, there is a fall, and this is, there is a cycle attached to it. And I think uh, the way COVID-19 and the responsibility, the shared responsibilities between ASEAN and India tells us that we need to cooperate more and uh, because a lot of things that India can share with the ASEAN countries, and there are a lot of many, many best practices that we can ASEAN offers to us. So to discuss um, ASEAN Indian FTA, because review process is about to start, and uh, just, uh, just to remind you that uh, this is about a market access. Uh, negotiation means one party uh, will engage with another party if it's the bilateral because ASEAN and India kind of a bilateral agreement, even though ASEAN is the 10 countries, we need to negotiate 10 separately, 10 separate countries have 10 different kinds of tariff schedule, non-tariff measures, et cetera. Whereas the, the advantage ASEAN countries on India is that India is a single market. So this was not there, the single market concept of India is not there in the last time in 2010, because in India, there were many domestic barriers, moving goods from one province, one state to another. So for last three years, India has been a single market through a GST and advanced very further. So this has given lots of opportunities for trade, ASEAN getting more, higher access to it. That's what I think, you know, there are studies indicate uh, that facilitation of trade has actually helped both the parties in, in having a higher market access, be it a domestic and in between that is so called international. But market access also brings you and every everyone that there are lots of barriers, right? And what kind of barriers we face, the studies that we have been doing at ASEAN India Center at, and many other places, the barriers are primarily between India and ASEAN countries. It is an, about a non-tariff measures, the standards, the recognition of standards, uh, and many others like, you know, there are still, you know, big tariffs, some of the goods are very high at the both end. There are many poor, you know, in the negative list. And demand for items which are in the negative list is actually also picked up uh, over time. So when we review those, we need to very carefully look at what are the products those were excluded, but picked up uh, the demand and the demand has picked up by the, by the consumers. So that's also we need to look. Ultimate goal is that for ASEAN Indian FTA evaluation is one is that we need to support value chain, this private sector, that is ASEAN advantages. Indonesia, for example, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, very strong, very Malaysia, strong, Philippines, very strong, vibrant private sector. So also in India, it's democratic forces. They match each other, they understand each other. So this is what you know, we see in coming next 10 years, 2030 still, you know, we will see many production 
chains, production links, value chains, whatever you call it. You know, the present form, this is a thin kind of an, uh, the volume wise, if you look at the value chains, it should be strengthened. And uh, whatever we do, you know, we see more people. That's what the Joint Secretary Sopkal, he, he told us, and also the Deputy Chief of Missions, that any kind of an FTA should lead people to people relations. That's important. New potentials, new areas, which I see that, you know, investment areas, services, we haven't done much. And there are many issues and uh, moving, particularly the independent professionals from Philippines or India going to ASEAN countries, visa restrictions, et cetera, et cetera. There, the area which we need to work more closely on energy uh, and technology sectors. So these are the new areas which might pick up an interest, both from ASEAN private sector and, and, uh, and India as well. Joint Secretary rightly said that enhancing the flow of information, so new mechanisms required, as well as sub-regional corporations. Uh, you know, if it's ASEAN is a you know is a hub, there could be some spokes around it. So IMTGT, ACME, CLMBBT, uh, MTC, those. So we need to also give some add in add a momentum all that. So with uh, you know such uh, just a brief background about today's uh, webinar, I uh, I uh, invite. Uh, the speakers in order like uh, Ms. Dina Kudanasari, she, she is the director of ASEAN negotiations. Uh, she is directly handling the negotiation from ASEAN and Indonesia, Minister of Trade, and then followed by Ms. Indu Nair. She is equally, uh, you know, counterpart of um, uh, Ms. Dina in, in Ministry of Commerce. She is handling ASEAN at the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, followed by uh, two very important um, uh, speakers, Dr. Lina Alexandra from CSIS. CSIS is one of the prominent think tanks from the region. And then uh, Mr. Pranab Kumar, who is handling the international trade and CII, the views of Confederation of Indian Industries, the business sector. Just, I, I thought that should be somebody from Kadin, but somehow it's not there. So Pranav will be um, sharing the Indian perspectives and I have shared some of the questions to all of them. So the time for each is about 10 minutes and my task is to keep my watch and please uh, restrict the time within 10 minutes. And if you'd like to pick up your, any of the questions that is shared to you, please uh, feel free to do so. Uh, and with that, uh, I invite Ms. Tina to take the floor and over to you. Proud, proud day. Yeah, uh, may I request uh, Ms. Dina Kurinisari to take the floor? Thank you, Ring. Uh, thank you, Pat. Uh, a very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, hi, so many uh, familiar faces. Uh, Deputy Chief of Nations, Baba Mansne Elvisa, very nice to meet you again, Pat. Joint Secretary, Mrs. Uh, Sri Vitsa Spidus Sakal, uh, Professor and Coordinator as an India Center, uh, Mr. Dr. Prabir Dave. Hopefully, I, I can uh, call your name correctly, Pat. Senior Research Department from JSIS, Ibu Lina Alexandra, uh, distinguished panelists, participants, ladies and gentlemen, and also I would like to uh, thanks, uh, extend appreciations for Indonesian Embassy in India, as well as the India Center in New Delhi for inviting me as one of the speaker uh, in this very important events. I'm very pleased to meet you all, uh, and I believe that this forum, this platform, can be used as a, a effective communication for all of us to have uh, the same understanding regarding the, the process of the upgrading or the review of ASEAN India FTEs. Can I just uh, show the to the screens uh, my presentations, please? Okay, uh, next slide, please. Uh, to begin with, uh, with all of you, all of you might be already uh, alerted 
Indonesia, uh, ASEAN, India, Free Trade Agreement, uh, we can call this as the implementation or the voluntary FTAs was signed at the 13 August uh, 2009. And Indonesia already ratified the agreements through the issuance of the presidential decree uh, number 40 uh, 2010. Uh, it's already been uh, implementing since uh, the 26th of August 2010. So it, uh, it's already been uh, 10 years already. And with regard to the review of the AIT, uh, it is expected to be uh, the kick off meetings or the kick off the negotiations can be uh, start in early 2022 next year, subject to the finalizations of the scoping paper. I will discuss whether on the latest progress of the scoping paper at the next slides. And for the IIT, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we still still kids, uh, participants. IATIGA consists of uh, 20 articles. Uh, the content of or the important element of the IATIGA uh, basically it's average tariff negotiations for uh, roughly 76% until 80%, depending on the data that you use. Uh, therefore, the review will aim to achieving a meaningful and to the extent possible the highest level of tariff negotiations as agreed by the parties. The element, the, the other elements uh, that we must also alert and also aware is the rules of origins. We all agree that uh, currently the RVC 35% plus CDSS will be the general rules. And hopefully we have uh, uh, the same understanding or the same uh, ambitions in doing the, the review in the next steps. And the other one is the custom procedures and also uh, trust facilitated uh, facilitation measures. Uh, it's also uh, including the SDS, Straka, the trade remedies, and also NTMs. All the commitments under the uh, ASEAN India trade inbuilt agreements uh, reaffirms uh, our commitments in the WTO agreements. And for the review, I believe this is also the, the most uh, important element as well. Uh, the, the review uh, uh, provisions give mandate to GC after the activation process to review the IIT yeah, to consider the additional measures to further enhance the, uh, the ASEAN India FTA. And currently, uh, we also still doing the once again uh, the finalizations of the scoping paper. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, as you see on the screen, uh, you can see that uh, the liberalization of the ASEAN Plus One FTAs compared with the RCEP. Uh, it's possible that average liberalizations of all parties under ASEAN India uh, IIT is around 80%. Meanwhile, the highest average rate of that liberalization is the NZF FTA. And if we also go to the next slide, we can see that uh, uh, actually, all of us actually have the numbers in our pocket, so I don't want to repeat it again. But we can see that this is the important role or the important uh, uh, positions of India in um, for ASEAN in the ASEAN. India is the ASEAN sixth largest trading partner and the seventh largest source of FDI among ASEAN developed uh, partners in 2020. Even though we also believe that. Despite being close to ASEAN in the world, but the position is still uh, behind the China, the United States, and also the Japan. So I believe we, in this forum, we can discuss many ways to improve our bilateral trade as well as our regional trade. And in the next slide, we can also see that uh, India also have a very important role for Indonesia as. The, the, uh, our important or the largest trading partner. The position is in the number uh, number five, I believe. And from this point, we can see there is still many rooms, still many room for uh, both of us to improve uh, our bilateral uh, trade. And obviously, both countries also need to look uh, for any uh, potential products in the futures, uh, for not only goods but also for investments and also services to level up the, the economic level into the new, the new stage. 
hopefully uh, during this uh, discussions, this evening or this afternoon discussion, we also can have any recommendations, and, uh, any advice, any input, uh, so we can uh, reach uh, 15 billion uh, US dollar uh, by 2025 as targeted by world uh, leaders. And if we can go to the next slide, we can see the, the COO utilizations uh, from all ASEAN Plus One FTEs. But uh, let me uh, focus on the, the utilizations of the IT here. Uh, if we can see from the screens during the period of 2015 to the, uh, 2020, where there was a the trade of credit good using the CEO from AI, and using COO from AI, you, you can see, all of us, you can see that Indonesia actually have a very good trend, a positive trend uh, during the last five years. The highest export level is using the CEO from, uh, from AI was recorded in 2013 when the figure was recorded at uh, 23 billion US dollars. And there is a slightly decrease uh, during the, uh, the pandemic COVID-19. Hopefully it can be uh, overcome uh, after uh, uh, next year's hopefully. And uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, we can also see that um, the process of or the journey of the IT year of you. Uh, we can say that uh, in the September 2020, uh, the ministers agreed to expedite the finalizations of the scoping paper and the activation of ASEAN India FTAs. The scoping paper, I believe, is the, uh, a very important element, a very important paper, uh, paper uh, because it's aimed to set up the possible element that could be negotiated during the review. And also, the scoping paper, I believe, uh, will not be judged, pre negotiate uh, the outcome of the ATR review. And currently, uh, we already sent actually the, the scoping paper uh, based on the input uh, from all member states of ASEAN. To India, and we are still looking forward for any input from India. Next slide. Uh, and inside, we would like to uh, emphasize, even though that there is many uh, process going on, there is uh, so many effort. We also are already undertaken many uh, coordinations with related uh, agencies and ministries. But however, there is uh, some challenges in doing the, the review process. The first of all, the commitment to review the agreement due to, to ambitious to some countries. Uh, there's, there are a gap regarding the ambitions uh, amongst the parties uh, to finalize this public paper. And the second one, I believe that there will be a relatively fuse in finalizing the spoken paper, particularly for the very important issues like ROO, and then also the, uh, the uh, issue of the PSR and then the, uh, the DPT and SPS. And there is many uh, para, uh, there is many articles in the scoping paper that have not been cleared yet. So hopefully, uh, as soon as possible, we can finalize the scoping paper to, and then we can go to the next stage. And the, the third one, the joint committee has not been established yet. The Joint Committee, as I have been said earlier, has played a very important role in doing the, the review uh, doing the review of the ASEAN India FTAs. So there is no consensus yet regarding the establishment of Joint Committee currently. So hopefully this issue also can be resolved uh, uh, soon as so we can have the same understanding or the same uh, stage of uh, ambitions of these matters. And, the, uh, and the, I believe this is not the last, but the current pandemic situation has been some difficulties for the parties to communicate intensively and effectively. As well, many economic and marketing issues have been distractions to the focus of any upgrading negotiations. And uh, I believe this process, the whole process, uh, the global trends uh, also impact uh, the uh, negotiation process as well. And the 
plants but not the least, many plants actually because of due to the global trend also somehow create any policies which also violate the adjective of the AIFTAs and create impediment that might rise and negatively affect our negotiation process. So in this regard, during the discussion, I believe we can uh, discuss elaborately regarding the, the current trend, the current issues or any policies that may uh, bring negative side to our uh, negotiation process. And if I may go to the next slide, this is the this, uh, this is the scope of the review of the IIT here. Uh, like I just uh, mentioned earlier, uh, the ASEAN Secretariat and also uh, the, the whole the whole ASEAN member state already uh, compile all the input uh, regarding the scope the scoping paper of the review of the IIT here. It consists of the objective, the principle, the scope and review, and the lens for the reviews. But once again, uh, we have uh, sent the documents uh, to India on 12 November, a um, few weeks ago, yeah, 12 November. But uh, we still waiting for uh, positive ref uh, response or support from India. Hopefully, maybe from uh, Baba Masni and also the, uh, all uh, the embassy, uh, Indonesian embassy can also help us, assist us to persuade or uh, to have a gentle reminder for our uh, counterpart in India so they can give a uh, further uh, response towards uh, these documents. And the next step are the recommendations on the, the following actions. What's to be next for all of us? I believe the finalization of the scoping paper is our biggest combo for all of us from ASEAN member state and for India and it needs two to tango to finalize the whole process. Hopefully uh, the finalization of the scoping paper can be uh, finalized uh, next year, early next year during the IM retreat. The IM retreat will be conducted in February next year. So we, we have a very time constraint to finalize the uh, it's going to be and we need a very strong commitment for all of us to finalize this copy paper. And the next one will be the activating the FTA joint committee to oversee the review negotiations. After then, we can set in the review work plan or work program. The work plan or the work program will consist of the timeline and then also the objective, the targeted, and also uh, the, the overall uh, ambitions for all the parties and we will then embark to the negotiation process and uh, hopefully the signing of the protocol to amend the ETIGA will be conduct, can be conducted as soon as possible. Uh, I believe it will be it will need two years roughly uh, for uh, ASEAN member state and also the plus one partners to uh, not only uh, finalize the negotiation process for the upgrading uh, negotiations. And then after that, we can uh, ratify the, the documents and, and then it can be entered into force. All the process hopefully can be done, can be achieved uh, during the, the next two until three years as the targeted uh, by ASEAN and also uh, hopefully by India. I think that's all uh, for the, the latest progress for the review of uh, ASEAN India FTA. I'm looking forward for any input and any questions, inquiries regarding the process and uh, any advice for all of us so we can uh, soon embark to the next step of the, the review of ASEAN India FTA. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Ms. Dina Purinsari, thank you. And very detailed presentations. And also you, you, you very clearly said the way forward, what's next to be done. And to me, two challenges, I think, were from scoping paper to ratification. Um, two challenges, one is the global scenario of COVID. Uh, you yourself said the four challenges, the last one was on, on, on the COVID challenges, which is coming up new challenges of the health sector, pandemic, etc. Other one is the setting up the joint committee. So these two, uh, I think the most important, but uh, nonetheless, 
an excellent presentation setting that stone for the today's webinar and also you know encouraging us to have a new thinking on the on the review of the fda thank you and let me move on and i invite uh, the next speaker uh, madam indu nayar uh, she is your counterpart uh, in a way in in the ministry of commerce uh, she is handling asean she is a director in the foreign trade and asean division over to you madam uh, thank you uh, excellency mr masni arisa deputy chief of mission indonesia sri sapkal jsmea dr prabhi de professor as uh, ms dina ministry of uh, trade indonesia esteemed speakers ladies and gentlemen uh, a very good afternoon it's my pleasure to be a part of this important discussion on the potential of india asean fta next year india and asean are completing 30 years of a strong partnership and it is being celebrated as the year of india asean friendship i'm hopeful that we would be formally initiating the asean india trade in goods agreement review next year we are keenly engaged on finalizing the scoping exercise in time so that it will be a fitting tribute to our friendship commemoration uh, ms deena had already taken us through a comprehensive presentation she had already shown us uh, the the journey we have uh, uh, traveled till now and she has all she has also highlighted the challenges currently we are facing right now we both both sides are finalizing the scoping exercise we have we already had two rounds of negotiations on the scoping and uh, india received uh, the asean's new draft in, on 12th november 2021 currently we are consulting we are in consultation with our stakeholder ministries and customs to finalizing the to finalize the provisions of the scope now uh, since uh, the uh, ms deena had already gone through the entire process i would now restrict to some of the uh, main points related to india's ambition from the fta so signed in 2009 one of the earliest fta's of india itica is a very important fta for india from the perspective of trade integration and global value chain india and indonesia are two of the five original signatory countries who ratified the fta in 2010 india's economic rationale for fta with asean included the objective of achieving diversification and expansion of our exports as well as access to cheap raw material intermediary products and capital goods in the fta india had kept only an exclusion list of 0.6% of the tariff lines to enable indian manufacturers to source product at competitive price significant preferential treatment was offered under chemicals base metals machinery and mechanical appliances etc ita has been implemented for more than 10 years during this uh, period india's trade with asean has obviously increased uh, india's trade with asean has increased to uh, uh, us dollar from us dollar 45 billion to around us dollar 97 billion in 2018-19 obviously this is the uh, trade figure prior to uh, um, the pandemic period the trade has contracted subsequently due to the pandemic situation but we could uh, achieve 97 billion in 2018-19 2018-19 but however uh, the value of trade achieved is very less compared to the us dollar 200 billion target which, uh, kept by our leaders we are yet to even uh, achieve 100 billion mark i would like to highlight india's exports increased from us dollar 37 billion from the pre fta period to 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 us uh, dollar 37 billion from the pre fta figure of 19 billion here again the trade figures i am mentioning are of pre pandemic period our fta has contributed to only in, in a limited manner in offering access to asean markets as per internal analysis more than half of asean's exports are coming to india through the fta route but india is yet to reap the full benefit of fta for its exports lack of reciprocity in tariff concessions in the itica is one of the major reason why for less utilization of fta by india while india had committed and implemented 74.3% of tariff elimination under itica 
some top ASEAN partners offered less and unequal tariff concessions. Uh, countries like Vietnam and Indonesia have offered very unequal uh, tariff concessions to India. For example, Indonesia's tariff elimination was limited to 50%. As you have seen in the presentation, the tariff concession in uh, ITCA was limited to 80% overall. As due to their less developed status, LDCs were also offered a longer period for implementation of their tariff concession schedule. So the tariff schedule of Vietnam, Philippines, Cambodia, uh, Laos uh, um, are fully getting implemented from 2021 onwards. And it is concluding in 2024 in some countries like Vietnam. The effective utilize and considering that Vietnam is a major trade partner in the, at the time when we signed the agreement in 2010, Vietnam was uh, not uh, uh, established as a major trading country. But now com considering the status Vietnam has achieved after the signing of the FTA, uh, uh, the kind of uh, tariff liberalization we have offered to Vietnam, we, we could not get the same level of market access to Vietnam's to the to Vietnam market. That is also one major reason why uh, uh, we could not utilize the FTA uh, fully or reap its benefits fully. The effective utilization of ITCA can now be only assessed only after the schedule has been uh, is fully implemented by all ASEAN partners. Let me come to imports now. Imports into India from ASEAN had increased manifold during the FTA period which has resulted in ballooning of our trade deficit to US dollar 23.82 billion. The large import of fuel and uh, palm oil from the region is one of the reasons for India's unfavorable trade balance with ASEAN. India imports around 8% of its essential fuel import from ASEAN. The dynamics of trade thus are inherently in favor of ASEAN irrespective of the FTAs. So to, to, for the FTA to benefit India, because of this inherent uh, uh, unfavorable uh, trade position, it is essential that ASEAN markets offer more tariff advantages to India so that, uh, that we can maintain a sustainable trade. Now, let me have a look at, it, at the India-Indonesia bilateral trade under the FTA. Indonesia is the second largest partner of India in ASEAN with a bilateral trade of around US dollar 18 billion. We had reached a, a, a trade of 20 billion uh, pre-FTA period. However, uh, considering our target of 50 billion, this is very moderate. Trade with Indonesia amounted 22% of India's total trade with ASEAN. Our bilateral trade has been steadily growing over the years. Despite the ongoing pandemic disruption, the result of the first two quarters of 2021-22 are quite promising. We have achieved a record growth of 71% in the first six months. Trade ministers of both the countries have recently constituted two new joint working groups to strengthen our engagement on trade promotion, facilitation, and investment. We also had several rounds of high-level bilateral engagement in the last few years and even initiated some preliminary discussion on uh, signing a limited bilateral FTA with uh, Indonesia. But let me also acknowledge that uh, the trade dependency of the partners on each other is still insignificant compared to the potential. For example, India has only a moderate 5% share in Indonesia's total trade. India's contribution in Indonesia's global imports of US dollar 141 billion is a mere 2.7%. Similarly, though India is Indonesia's fifth export destination, India's share in Indonesia's total exports is just 6.4%. The trade basket is also dominated by agriculture, coal, and palm oil. India being the largest buyer of palm oil and coal, the trade balance has traditionally been in favor of Indonesia. The widening trade deficit with Indonesia since the FTA implementation continues to be a concern for India. Both partners need to explore diversifying its trade basket to promote sustainable trade. India continues to be the ninth import source of Indonesia after China, Singapore, and Japan. Indonesia has trade agreements with most of their major partners where the tariff arrangements are much more liberal. A majority of potential export commodities of India are under sensitive exclusion li list under ITCA. Engineering goods, gold and jewelry, gold jewelry, petroleum products, drugs and pharmaceuticals, organic and inorganic chemicals, 
textiles and electronic uh, goods are products with immense potential for trade with Indonesia. However, the exports are restricted at present because the duty structure under India ASEAN FTA doesn't facilitate these commodities currently. Expanded tariff elimination will ensure that Indonesia sources more from India and reciprocity in trade is maintained. We have also done an analysis of uh, what India, Indonesia is importing to India and how it can be uh, expanded. The trade can be, their exports can be expanded. Petroleum oils, gold, gas, coal, telephone, silver, copper, tractor parts, textile products, and medium oils, etc., are some of the top commodities of Indonesia which currently attract duties under India's ITK schedule. The review of India ASEAN FTA could be leveraged by both countries to expand the tariff liberalization to promote the two way trade. To cite an example of how FTA can be leveraged. To enhance the trade, let me highlight how Indonesia facilitated India's sugar exports using the FTA. India is a leading exporter of sugar, but we were unable to export to Indonesia due to its high ikumsa norms and duties. Ikumsa norms is a, a, a norm for the purity of the sugar, and earlier it was a very high value, and which was uh, uh, which was uh, restricting our exports to uh, Indonesia. So we were unable to export to Indonesia due to this ikumsa uh, uh, value and the duties. We had we, we faced a higher duty compared to our competitive countries like Thailand and others. In 2019, at uh, the in, uh, consistent request of India, Indonesia changed the sugar quantity norms and the and relaxed duty. Now the duty is five percent and relaxed duty to bring the duties to comparable to that of our competitors. Facilitation of Indian sugar by Indonesia has resulted in India exporting around half billion high quality sugar to Indonesia, which also helped Indonesia to meet its growing sugar demand at a time when there was global shortage of sugar supply during the COVID time. Thus, the arrangement mutually benefited both parties. Expanding tariff concessions in the review can indeed uh, help trade to pick up. Non-tariff barriers and issues relating to regulatory frameworks, especially in agriculture, auto, and health sectors are also causing huge impediment to the growth of our trade. The review of FTA will enable addressing the trade distorting of NDMs. Review of FTA would also encourage provisions for exchange of electronic documents and digital interface for facilitation of trade, which is essential in the context of the pandemic. Let me emphasize one more point before I conclude. India is concerned about misuse of ITK by third countries. The misuse of rules of origin by traders is detrimental to ASEAN countries themselves as it discourages value addition to their countries and only benefit third parties. The timely review of FTA will help in addressing the inherent tariff asymmetry in the text and align the FTA with modern trade practices to make it trade facilitative and business friendly. The review will give the much needed impetus to promoting India ASEAN trade. I am thankful to RIS and Trade Ministry of Indonesia and the Indonesian Embassy for organizing this good, dis good discussion. As I have highlighted earlier, India is uh, uh, consulting the stakeholders for finalizing the uh, scoping paper at the earliest. We would be by by in, in, uh, beginning of next month, I am hopefully we should be getting back to uh, ASEAN with our comments. Of course, we have a lot of challenges, as uh, Dina had pointed out, the level of ambitions, though India is also agreeable to go to uh, the maximum, the highest level of uh, tariff expansion. We are also agreeable to that. And But there are divergent views in finalizing the scope. There are some specific sensitive areas, and the joint committee also has to be set up. And moreover, India has an additional challenge of the reconciling the sensibilities and aspirations of all 10 ASEAN partners. That remains the key challenge for India as on date. Uh, so we are very keenly and closely engaging with ASEAN and hopefully we will be getting back with a uh, scoping paper in time for finalization by early 2022. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Induji, for presenting a very, very important perspective. We were expected from you and thank you very much.
I mean, I will just carry four few points, but there are many, uh, many uh, important points you shared. You know, the reciprocity is important for FTA utilization. It's very important. And uh, the one, you know, you said the timely review, aligning the FTA within global practices, and also, you know, the misuse of our Atiga. This is a very important aspect, in, particularly in India. I'm sure, you know, there will be many discussion on this in the Q&A session and also from the participants, those who are attending. Thank you once again, uh, not only on ASEAN and in India, but also on India, Indonesia for, for sharing your views. And uh, we take it purely the personal you know, opinion, you know, applying the usual disclaimers. So thank you. May I now invite Dr. Lina Alexandra, a senior researcher, uh, Department of International Relations, CSIS Jakarta. Take the floor. Over to you, Dr. Uh, Lina. Thank you very much, Dr. Prabhid Day. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Indonesian uh, Embassy in New Delhi and also the uh, RIS, AIC for inviting me to this excellent event this afternoon. Uh, allow me to share um, my PowerPoint um, slide, uh, just a moment. Okay. So basically, as uh, has been asked by the embassy uh, that I would uh, have to uh, share some of the um, thinkings regarding the geopolitical considerations, I must admit that I'm not an expert, I'm not an economist, and I'm not an expert in, in trade issues. So when being asked to give a presentation, I'm, I was a little bit confused, actually, what should I say? Because I don't really know about the trade issues, but um, the embassy mentioned to me that uh, I, uh, they would like uh, me to share some of the views regarding um, some of the geopolitical considerations which might have to be paid attention uh, when uh, uh, the free trade agreement between uh, ASEAN and India um, needs to be reviewed. Uh, but for me, actually, the logic normally is um, the thinking that ba um, bilateral trade or economic relations is actually the factor to mitigate the geopolitical tensions or security tensions. But this is some kind of a, the other way around, actually, um, to see um, uh, how we can uh, assess this, this issue. So basically, there are three points that um, I would like, three major parts that I would like to share in my presentation. The first, of course, uh, the, the geopolitical considerations, and the second, um, looking at some opportunities that are existing uh, to boost uh, this um, free trade agreement, as mentioned earlier by previous speakers, as well as in the welcoming remarks that, unfortunately, the trade ties or relations between the two countries um, has been decreasing, especially uh, in the context of pandemic. And the last part is probably some challenges or barriers, um, not necessarily challenges, but some issues that we might want to consider regarding the security issues. So I think I, I need to skip this part because all, almost all the speakers um, already mentioned about this. But basically, this is just to highlight that there has been existing commitments and willingness from both parties to um, forge um, or to enhance the cooperations between the two sides, um, ASEAN India, Indonesia India, um, so on and so forth. Uh, but the point that I want to highlight, and this is actually, um, this was actually asked by Dr. Prabhid Day um, in a question sent to me and sent to the other speakers probably, um, is regarding the ASEAN India relations um, in the changing global scenario. So we all know in terms of geographical proximity, ASEAN and India um, are actually close with each other compared to the other regional powers. Um, and both um, sides actually understand each other's importance. But the fact uh, both uh, sides actually still having quite a distance in terms of substance, um, especially because both ASEAN and India, they are very much preoccupied pre with its own domestic um, or intra-regional um, interests or concerns or priorities. 
And uh, one of the issues that is quite um, significant in terms of geopolitical concern or security issue is the different understanding on the non-alignment. ASEAN, we all know, uh, most of the member states, they um, see uh, that close tight alliance with major powers is a big no-no. Um, and basically ASEAN wants to, wants to maintain um, balanced relations with all superpowers and major powers and regional powers. But India, to some extent, we all know India uh, is quite close with the Western, in this case, it's the US, and India uh, is in terms of um, competition with, with China. So that is the, the context that we might have to understand. So uh, basically in terms of opportunities, um, the first thing that uh, we all know here is the unfailed plan for India's act is policy in 2014. This is a follow-up from the previous idea of look, looking to the, to the East policy. And this is actually a, good, a very good policy uh, by the Indian government to start um, looking at ASEAN or Southeast Asia region as another potential uh, strategic partner for India. Uh, but we have to admit that this is still quite limited because um, instead of reaching to all ASEAN member states, India still playing so much um, at the border area. As you can see from the initiative of BCIM here, um, um, India still reaching um, um, only uh, Myanmar in this issue. And with the other uh, issue of BIMSTEC, for example, so it only adds Thailand. Uh, instead of um, another um, uh, uh, Southeast Asia countries. In terms of trade relations, um, there has been some um, quite significant trade relations with Singapore, as far as I know. But then again, it's not really uh, so much with the other um, ASEAN member states. So um, basically the other, um, the other opportunity also is the quite recent ASEAN India Blue Economy Initiative. In the ASEAN India Commemorative Summit in January 2018, the vision for the future ASEAN India um, strategic partnership, it has been mentioned that the maritime doma domain as one of the key areas for partnership. And I think this is quite true because uh, uh, this actually linked to the idea of Indo-Pacific um, linking between Pacific and uh, Pacific Ocean countries and uh, Indian Ocean countries. And both countries, I think, um, as Indonesia is an archipelagic state and India is um, quite a strong um, maritime state as well, there is certainly potential and opportunity to be developed um, uh, in terms of developing uh, the maritime um, cooperation or you can say as blue economy. Um, and if not with all ASEAN member states, because some countries are actually landlocked, at least this is one of the potential area that can be developed uh, in terms of the relations, the bilateral relations between, Indo between Indonesia and India. So the other opportunity also in terms of geopolitical um, uh, issue is the, um, how to say, the, the connection, the similarities between ASEAN Outlook on Indo-Pacific, AOIP, and India's Indo-Pacific Oceans Initiative, uh, IPOI. Um, both concepts share quite significant uh, um, items or views. Um, the first one, of course, the important connections among countries between Indian Ocean and Pacific Ocean as a closely integrated and interconnected region. Uh, again, the import, um, both concepts emphasize on the importance of maritime domain, and both concepts also mention about the principles of inclusivity, transparency, rule-based international order, and also the vision to achieve peace, prosperity, um, prosperity, growth, and stability. So those are the, the things that are actually um, the opportunities, the existing um, modalities that can be um, explored further uh, in order to boost for a better um, relations between um, ASEAN and India, as well as Indonesia and India. Um, in terms of challenges, 
uh, this is quite interesting because when you look at the, the, the term competition uh, and you look, look at the term from the perspective of economy, competition is actually good um, because, and, to, um, and also to enhance free trade areas uh, between ASEAN and India, it's actually a good thing because uh, it will help ASEAN to mitigate high dependence on China. As we know, China up until now still control um, the largest global supply chain uh, in the world. And by expanding the free trade um, relations between ASEAN and India, that will certainly help ASEAN to, um, um, release, uh, to, to relieve some of the um, dependence on China. And this is very important. But in the security context, it's rather different to see um, uh, the term competition. As we know, ASEAN, uh, it seeks to uh, pursue the so-called ASEAN centrality. And in this case, it, it aims to create or maintain the zone of peace, freedom, and neutrality. And with India, um, at, uh, ASEAN countries actually quite closely watching the development since India joined the Quad, which essentially the US security pact. And the ASEAN country has been watching closely because this um, um, development with Quad has the potential to bring to bringing down the US-China competitions to the Southeast Asia region. And this is something uh, that ASEAN countries uh, will uh, very much um, anticipate. Um, and the other issue is, which is the, which um, connect between the security concern and also the economic um, issue is the India's refusal, uh, refusal to join RCEP. And as we know, the RCEP is one, uh, one of the trademarks, one of the main um, thing for ASEAN, which feature very much the ASEAN centrality. And um, this has raised some concern, of course, um, uh, although we certainly understand about the anxiety of India uh, with the um, uh, free flow of China goods into India. Um, and uh, again, um, uh, there's a, there has been an anxiety that Southeast Asia will become an arena for major powers competitions, as there has been some uh, interest from few um, Southeast Asia countries to join the Quad to make it a Quad Plus. Um, so basically, um, just very quick recommendations. Of course, this can be um, added further as we will go through the discussions later on. The first thing, very quick and practical recommendations is to explore further potentials to develop ASEAN India, or at least we can start with Indonesia India Blue Economic Plan. And second is uh, how to uh, engage further with India and and this is particularly the responsibility. The responsibility is more on the ASEAN to really um, um, share the idea and then um, yeah, basically share idea, communicate further on the importance of um, regional partners, including India, not only India, but also including India to help support the ASEAN centrality in mitigating the major power rivalries. So with that, I think I'll stop there. Uh, Dr. Prabhi, I, I certainly can answer your other questions, but probably other uh, uh, probably participants will ask about that, so I can answer that during the Q and A sessions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Lina, for raising important issues. Even though those were not part of pure FTA negotiation or FTA goods discussion, but I I found these are very very important. The blue economy and the ASEAN centrality. You also brought in the competition is good, is an important point, very important, India and China, both, both, both uh, dimensions you have talked about. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Lina. Let me go to the last speaker, uh, Mr. Pranab Kumar, uh, who is heading the International Trade and CII. So Pranab, over to you. We are running um, 10 minutes behind the schedule. But I, I, I leave it to you, you know, you, you, your yeah, time. I will, I will yes. be as Thank you. as possible. Uh, Thank you very much. The, uh, the critical point which I wanted to uh, share has already been very well articulated by 
our senior officer from department of commerce mr indu nair uh, but more importantly let me first uh, express my sincere uh, thanks to the embassy of republic of indonesia as in india center and ris for giving this opportunity to uh, me and of course express the in industry viewpoint uh, and so this is of course a very important uh, subject and we are extremely happy that at least uh, the some momentum has started with regards to uh, the review of asian india trade in goods agreement uh, and we are hopeful and, uh, and we are hoping that soon the uh, scoping side will be over and then the serious uh, and more negotiation will start with an aim to conclude the review uh, sometime as early as possible in 2022 and we are all looking forward to that uh, but some of the points which uh, uh, ms nair has mentioned like uh, and that we have been articulating and sharing with our ministry of commerce and industry like misuse of uh, uh, fta agreement with asean misuse of uh, rules of origin and by the third country and all and more importantly the non tariff measures she mentioned about uh, pharmaceutical she mentioned about agriculture products which we are not able to get the uh, meaningful access in asian market uh, but looking at the uh, in fact a lot of uh, data and uh, history has already been uh, shared by very speakers uh, but more importantly what i would like to bring it here that uh, we are talking about deepening of uh, india asian uh, trade investment relations and when we talk about deepening of trade investment relations this is this should not only pertain to goods uh, pravir in his uh, remarks mentioned about european union integration eu integration but we all are aware that is the most successful uh, example of economic integration and that has not happened only because of the trade in goods it's a trade in goods services investment movement of people so all aspects were covered then only we see the kind of textbook example of eu integration though it's another story that now uk is part of that brexit because of brexit and all but of course eu is the kind of uh, uh, standards for all of us to replicate and move forward uh, two points which have been raised again and again and initially the deputy chief of nation he mentioned about uh, rcep though india is not a part of rcep uh, uh, but the point he mentioned is very significant that india is not a party to rcep therefore it is all the more important for india particularly to look at uh, uh, deepening uh, fta and trade relations with asean and other countries of the region whether it's japan korea australia new zealand all those uh, who are the members of rcep and we have uh, existing free trade agreement with asean we have existing free trade agreement with us uh, with japan and korea also so i do not want to go into rcep that story is well known why india is not part of that uh, so second uh, issue is uh, the value chain and our joint secretary also mentioned about uh, uh, the value chain uh, need to have a regional value chain and when we talk about uh, value chain it is of course not the domestic value chain it is a cross border value chain and when we talk about cross border value chain it's not it, this cannot happen only if we talk about trade in goods but for the last uh, 10 years so if we have seen whatever progress in in india asean relationship india asean free trade agreements it only pertains to good trade in goods so services investment though we have been able to sign agreement later on in 2015 and all person like it but we have not seen much progress on two fronts whether it's investment or if services particularly in fact kavir uh, has raised this question to me also the services and investment between us and india need a stronger support what would be the interest of indian industry in services trade particularly so no value chain is possible without having a strong two way trade two way trade relations two way investment relation or two way services uh, uh, trade relations so 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 these aspects we have to uh, uh, the uh, focus upon and coming to the services part because that uh, part has not been covered uh, most of the speakers they have very uh, uh, well articulated the uh, goods part particularly the trade in goods which almost we touched the 100 billion mark uh, before the pandemic 97 billion but on services front we need to make real progress then only we can achieve the uh, 
real integration because next year when we are celebrate going to celebrate the 30 years of india asian strategic partnership and india asian friendship year then of course the friendship cannot happen if we 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 do not have free movement of people uh, and uh, more deeper uh, relations uh, particularly in the services sector particularly so uh, as you all know that uh, in services particularly we are uh, uh, strong in uh, it naval services uh, in fact in rcep also we raised this issue in uh, india asean in services negotiation also we have raised this issue we want uh, more meaningful market access for our services uh, professionals particularly so that is one aspect we need to cover i know that is not part of the asean india uh, uh, fta review because that is only pertaining to goods but uh, on services we have to uh, sooner or later we have to cover if we at all are serious about uh, uh, developing a very robust value chain between india and asean in services i think it's not only the image which has been created that in services only india would gain it's not like that because if you look at the some of the asian countries whether it's thailand indonesia malaysia all are the, uh, very attractive tourist destination many of the indian tourists uh, uh, they are going they are spending so uh, singapore is, again is very attractive destination for indian students so my point is that if we are really serious we want to uh, make india asean trade and investment relations really uh, we have to deepen it then services should not be ignored so that is important i think it will be a win win for both uh, because there are certain sectors where asean countries are very strong there are certain sectors we are strong uh, and so we would really like to see uh, more progress on services coming to the value chain particularly uh, 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 Ms. Indu Nair mentioned about the non-tariff measures, uh, and again, when we talk about value chain, it is very important to harmonize the standards. So, and we need to really work hard on it because uh, when we talk about value chain, it's maybe it's Indian companies or companies based in ASEAN or maybe third country. Because as far as I know, in ASEAN country, most of the uh, lead firms, those who are leading the value chain, it is either a Korean company or a Japanese company. so of course they have their own set of a standard they prescribe so it is all the more important for both indian and asean to scale up our investment improve our standards or harmonize so that we get integrated into those value chain uh, the services already i have covered because services again is important from the value chain point of view uh, connectivity and connectivity uh, though there has been lot of work done pravir himself has done lot of work on the india asian connectivity but we need to further see uh, the real progress on uh, connectivity when we talk about connectivity it's not only the physical connectivity the maritime connectivity it is the digital connectivity it's the people to people connectivity and more important air connectivity that is also important so that also help in uh, Uh, value chain uh, uh, development with india and uh, asean so so these are some of the point which uh, i wanted to uh, these are some of the point which i wanted to mention i definitely do not want to repeat what has already been said with regards to goods and the issues uh, with regards to uh, goods agreement that has already been articulated but one point uh, final point is that if you see the and the trajectory of uh, trade for the last 10 years uh, uh, it's uh, really uh, asymmetric i would say uh, and though the overall trade has increased but the trade deficit has also widened so we need to address that i must say Uh, and that is not a very difficult task because we need to sit at all we need to address the ntas we need to address some of the anomalies in the tariff structure and all and that we would be able to address it thank you very much thank you very much uh, pranab you know you, you know you spoke on uh, on three important things you know which uh, i found uh, very much uh, part of this today's discussion one is services you highlighted uh, free movement of human resources and you know between india and asean uh, services market is yet to be you know in free in that sense and when services comes uh, domestic regulations 
a very important. Uh, of course, you know, we didn't have much time to discuss about those integrities and going in very narrow. Uh, but indeed, you, you highlighted that, uh, you know, standards and all those things. So, so thank you very much, Pranab. And uh, we have completed uh, the panel uh, discussion. Four uh, eminent speakers spoke uh, many important issues, starting with uh, um, uh, Dina Kurinasari, ma'am, uh, Indu Nair, ma'am, then Dr. Lina and Pranab both uh, spoke um, well, and there are many new food for thought for our, our panelists and also for the participants to come out with the second uh, stage of discussion. So I, uh, I open the floor and uh, I ask uh, the organizers uh, to manage the Q&A. Just to add here that uh, Dr. Lina supposed to speak about answer the second questions which uh, she wanted to speak. And uh, also there are questions on the chat box. Uh, doc, uh, I found uh, uh, Dr. Plobarger, uh, if I pronounce the name properly from Bangkok, you know, he raised two questions. Uh, question one, Dr. Lina can answer. Questions two, if no one can answer this question. Will Indonesia in the economic cooperation's implication for India's Northeast? I will come in. So with that, I invite the organizers to uh, manage the Q&A and uh, I'm there to assist if, if required. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Prabir Day, uh, our able moderator and also dear panelists. So this is the Q&A session allow me to take, uh, take up several questions uh, from the Q&A boxes, the chat, and also questions deposited through other private channels. So firstly, let me just take up questions that has been mentioned uh, just now by Dr. Prabir Day from Dr. Plo Berger. CBIS Bangkok, that's the Chakra Bongse Bhuvanart International Institute for Interdisciplinary Studies. The question has two geographic focuses. Firstly, to what extent will Indonesia-India economic cooperation and Indonesia's commitment of becoming a maritime power offer a support for the Bay of Bengal concept for cooperation? And the second part, the big question is, will Indonesia-India economic cooperation generate an impact on India's far Northeast region? Uh, he mentioned specifically Assam and Meghalaya. That's the first question. Now allow me also to take up uh, two other questions. Firstly, from the Q&A box from Francisco Suramas Rembon from Timor University in East Nusa Tenggara, Indonesia. I believe this question is uh, specific uh, in terms of economic and trade and could be answered by both parties. The question is, what commodity has the most potential to have economic value that can be developed in the future to increase Indonesia and India's foreign exchange post COVID-19? And allow me for the last question, uh, maybe this, this could be a first round takeaway. The last question is from one of the Indonesian company. Uh, the question is specific from uh, Indonesia. Indonesian company uh, based in Indi India, which use cacao from Indonesia as one of its key ingredients for their products. However, the Indian import duty rate for cacao from Indonesia is currently still high at 30%. The question is, uh, is cacao part of the negotiated item during the IFTA review and what's the prospect for lowering its import duty? That's from the Q&A uh, boxes and chat for, for now, Dr. Prabir Day. And dear panelists, uh, the floor is again back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gustav. Thank you very much. Uh, let me first come to Dr. Lina. Uh, you'd like to uh, uh, answer uh, the questions. All I right. Two questions uh, 
actually given to you to answer. All right. Thank you, Dr. Pravide. Thank you for the question from Dr. Bloberger from Bangkok. Um, basically, I might have to tweak a little bit because uh, probably some other panelists uh, would answer this better. But I just give my perspective regarding Indonesia's commitment of becoming American power, whether it will offer support for the Bay of Bengal concept for cooperation. I think the issue is, of course, on the paper, yes, uh, the idea of Indonesia becoming a, mar a real American power will certainly help to um, enhance or support the Bay of Bengal concept. But um, while this commitment was made by our president in the beginning of his uh, presidency, uh, currently, especially with the pandemic, um, the concept has not been so much developed, unfortunately. Um, it needs to be, of course, the president has been focusing very much on um, developing in investment, um, on infrastructures, oh, sorry, infrastructures, I mean. But then um, the issue of developing um, um, the maritime infrastructure has been very much um, halted. Um, and this is important on how Indonesia pursues first on how it will develop the capacities to become American power, started from um, developing the infrastructures, so it will develop its economic power, and then it, it can support the Bay of Bengal um, um, concept um, later on. And as I mentioned earlier, with this Bay of Bengal concept with BIMSTEC, it's, it, is, it also needs to be enhanced because so far it's still focusing so much on, it's still very much focusing on the um, several, um, only few um, Southeast Asian countries, only at the border uh, with India, with Myanmar and Thailand. And um, in the future, this might need to be um, expanded further if possible. But with this, I, I might have to add, uh, because this can be linked to the Indo-Pacific um, idea as well, as um, you asked Dr. Prabir um, in, the, um, in the list of questions. Um, the idea um, that if I can refer to the um, a paper, the article by Dr. Risa Sukma, our um, senior fellow in CSIS, the original idea actually was not um, Indo-Pacific, but it's Pacific, in, in, um, Pacific Indo um, concept, the Pachindo. And with that concept, he mentioned about developing, um, that was released in 2015, the idea. The idea was to create the, uh, the Asian Falcon of Four, which basically the informal gathering of the regional powers, which include India, China, Japan, and I personally would add um, South Korea as the regional powers. And this is the informal gathering. And this kind of issues of enhancing um, economic cooperation and exchanging ideas, share ideas, including Indonesia's aspiration to become a maritime power, maritime power can be shared and, and, and discussed. So um, I think the, the issue of um, developing this um, um, idea of having informal gatherings of regional powers, I think this is something that we need to, to, to um, explore further. Um, and on the second questions with uh, in, in Indonesia, India economic cooperation, impact on India's Northeast region, uh, I don't really um, address the issue of economic cooperation. But what I want to say is we know the, that India's Northeast um, area, especially the Assam, has been um, designated or um, uh, thought as India's um, gateway to ASEAN, especially due to its uh, potential. And if you look at to the map, if you look at the map, it's um, it's going through Myanmar as the entry point for India to um, uh, engage with the other Southeast Asian countries. And with this, because I, uh, for the past few months, especially since the coup in Myanmar, I would like to propose that in this case, this is actually the opportunity for India to play a bigger role to help ASEAN dealing with, uh, with the current crisis in Myanmar. Because with the stability and peace in Myanmar, that will certainly help India 
to pursue its act its policy, as well as um, expanding the cooperation with the Southeast Asian countries, including Indonesia. Thank you, Dr. Prabhu. Thank you very much. May I now come to uh, Ms. Dina? Would you like to say something? Would you like to answer the last questions? Uh, are you there? Uh, Ms. Dina Kurinisari? Okay, I think she's not there. Uh, may I come to uh, Ms. Indu Nair? Would you like to add something from your side as the closing remarks? Uh, look, I mean, I would like to answer one or two questions. Please. In the Q&A session. Um, one was regarding review of duties on some one particular product. I mean, this was a, uh, I mean, question from some Indonesian uh, company. I couldn't right. get the name of the product, but I would like to suggest that uh, right now we are in the scoping stage. But after that, when the negotiation starts, we will be exchanging the offer and demand list. So I request him to get in touch with the Indonesian industry and give uh, um, uh, and suggest this product for inclusion in the list. And we, in India, we are also consulting our industry to prepare, uh, to identify the most potential products which can be part of the review of the FTA. So I would suggest yeah. even Indonesian industry can get in touch with their concerned trade ministry and uh, get the work. I'm sorry, it's like that you are muted, Ms. Hindu. Petroleum products and engineering goods and textiles, electronic goods, they also have great potential. So we would be looking at many of the sectors and uh, potential products when uh, the negotiation formally starts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, may I come to uh, Pranab? Would you like to answer some of the questions? Yeah, I think... Uh, mm, mm. One of the questions uh, which was raised that uh, uh, what all new products I think we can uh, we, uh, in, include in our trade basket particularly. And looking at the India, ASEAN and India, Indonesia in particular, for instance, from Indonesia, what we have been importing, uh, palm oil and coal. Oh. More uh, 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 the primary products which are being imported, and of course from our side, it's not very really high value products which are being exported. So, uh, so this is all the more important from our point of view. We need to change the profile of our export basket from both the ends. We have to just uh, uh, increase uh, our bilateral trade because high value added because. So that is important. And that also applies for the ASEAN also, because if you look at our export profile, particularly what we have been exporting, it's largely petroleum products and iron and steel and some other uh, primary uh, particles and all the products. So, so this could happen again. I would like to reiterate that uh, if the, we are able to uh, have a more uh, deeper uh, trade relations and we are trying with just uh, try to address and the, some of the anomalies in the ex existing tariff structure in the FTAs that will help uh, uh, attract investment, not only from the from India to ASEAN, ASEAN to India, but from third parties also. And that will help in deepening the uh, value chain aspect. So I, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pranab. Uh, I think- uh, uh, Dr. Prabir De, sorry. Could yeah, please. A second harvest of questions. Yeah, please, we, we have five, five, questions. five more minutes. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, looking could... for Miss Dina. You know, I could not reach to her, so she's here. I think yes. Yeah, Miss Dina, would you like to say something? Some questions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, thank you for giving me the uh, I would like to try to answer the questions regarding the most potential uh, or the have the economic value that can be developed in the future to increase Indonesia and India for an extent post-COVID-19. Um, based on my personal point of view, uh, I believe we can strengthen our corporations in pharmaceutical sectors, but, uh, such as uh, vaccines, 
food actions, supply of uh, the material for the uh, vaccine productions, and also uh, we can also in increase uh, the MNP for the health uh, personnel. And based on our readings, uh, I believe that the Indonesian Embassy uh, also already undertaken uh, internal uh, research with the private uh, researchers. And actually, they already uh, identified several potential products to be imported to India such as the electric capacitors, cultural pearls, wool pump, spices. I believe that Indonesia has a very strong potential for the exportation for the spices and also natural rubber, rubber and also wood, obtaining uh, oils and also extract of coffee and chocolate. I believe that we can have a very good market in India. While on the other side, uh, Indonesia can also, uh, uh, India can also uh, import a potential product like uh, uh, bottle meat, uh, uh, horticultural products, butter, uh, automotive uh, motor cars, boilers, and also carpets. I believe uh, Indonesia Embassy or our trade attaché can also assist us in identify and also give more information, more detailed information regarding the potential products. And uh, in the long run, or in the, uh, in the medium or the long run, Indonesia and India also can um, explore any possibilities uh, for the a very current trend, a new trends in the global, such as circular economy, e-commerce, I believe both countries have a very strong positions in the e-commerce and also SMEs. Now those uh, sectors, I believe, can be developed, can be further discussed by both countries uh, to increase the trade and also uh, bilateral economic cooperation. And um, uh, I, I, I'm trying to also uh, answer the other questions regarding the influence and the success rate of the Indonesian trade in the ASEAN and near free trade agreements. Uh, actually, based on my previous presentations, uh, uh, based on the data uh, that I already uh, presents uh, during my presentations, there is a very positive trend uh, for Indonesia in terms in the context of ASEAN and India FTAs. And if we see from the, the utilization from the COO from, uh, or from AI, we can also see a very positive trend. Even though there is a very, uh, there is a slightly increase uh, during the pandemics, but uh, if we can oversee from the five uh, the five uh, years period, we can see a very positive impact uh, based uh, because of the AI uh, FTA. So it can be uh, there is more. Uh, there is, I believe there is more room for improvements in the future, particularly when the review of us and the FTAs can be concluded and the scoping paper can be finalized soon in the future. And I believe both sides, uh, both countries also can improve the, the socialization, the dissemination activities. Uh, because uh, in, the, in, in the private sectors in many provinces in Indonesia, is, is not familiar with the ASEAN India FTA or Tom II. They are already familiar with the ASEAN China FTAs and other uh, FTAs plus one with the other uh, partners. But for the ASEAN India, we still need to improve or to improve our uh, outreach activities or dissemination activities. So uh, there is a awareness from our private sectors to use the the Tom II. Uh, and utilize uh, the, the COO from AI so we can improve the optimization of the implementation of ASEAN India FTAs. Thank you, Pat. Thank, you, Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gustav. Uh, you said you, we could go for the second round. We just have a five minutes' time. Would you like to pick up any more questions? Yes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Prabirde. Due to time constraints, let's have just two questions in our second harvest. The first 
will be from Ibu Iswari Tambunan from Indonesian Christian University. The question is, how is the analysis of the influence and success rate of Indonesian trade in the ASEAN-India Free Trade Agreement? And the second question shortly from Ibu Nidia, Indonesia, specifically, specifically to Ms. Indu Nair, listening to your presentation, what is your recommendation for the low-hanging fruit outcome of the IFTA review? If you say that the biggest challenge is to ensure the balance in trade benefit between ASEAN and India. That will be the two last questions. Uh, thank you, Dr. Prabirde and all the panelists. Thank you. I yeah, The first question, I think I, I go to Ms. Dina. Briefly, you can answer to the, this question. Second question is directly to uh, Ms. Indu Nair. So Ms. Dina, would you like to respond to the first questions because it is analysis of trade in ASEAN in an FTA. In case you, you can't do it, that's all right. You know, not, not necessarily, you know, this was the questions out of, out of turn, you know, actually she didn't uh, speak about it. Uh, but certainly if it is an analytical aspects, I would add here that please uh, feel free to get in touch directly with us. Anyone in Indonesia and India would like to know more about analytical tools, techniques, we are here to assist. So thank you, that's what I can tell. Now um, um, over to Madam uh, Indunaya, would you like to respond to the second questions? I leave it to you, you know, if you, you know, on the uh, early, yes, early I, arrest. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, the, the question is regarding uh, how to ensure balance in trade with Indonesia and which will be the law hanging fruits. As I have stated earlier, uh, the trade deficit with Indonesia, we, we traditionally have a trade deficit with Indonesia because Indonesia is a major supplier of our fuel requirements. Coal and palm oil are our most uh, I mean, important uh, imports, uh, which we import from Indonesia. So uh, to, to have a sustainable trade balance, it is important that it is important that India gets more access to Indonesian market. So currently, there are a lot of uh, non-trade barriers. That is one aspect. And secondly, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, our uh, reciprocal trade is not happening currently because of the asymmetry in the tariff elimination schedule. Uh, this is a very old FTA which was signed in 2010 and which could not be reviewed for the last 10 years. So it is important that during the review, both sides look at uh, the maximum uh, tariff elimination which we can offer to each other, looking at the potential products and, you know, and uh, facilitate India's exports so that the trade deficit can be balanced and it can be bridged. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we have done the panel discussions. All four panelists, they spoke well answers all the questions. So we close the panel discussion and we hand over to the organizer uh, for the closing remarks and vote of thanks. We are on schedule of, you know, so we are on time. Thank you. So Madam Annie, Luanti, would you like to uh, give the, the closing remarks and vote of thanks or should I come? Thank you, Dr. Thank you. So I will give you the opportunity. Okay. okay, there were some audio um, disturbances. So I'm very sorry to it. take over, Dr. Prabir Day. Uh, for the closing uh, uh, remarks, we would like to firstly invite you, Dr. Prabir Day. Uh, okay. to convey your vote of thanks. And then it will be followed by our colleague, Mr. Dani from Jakarta, Indonesia. Please, the screen is yours. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, uh, the nation mission in, in Delhi uh, and uh, Mr. Gustav um, for uh, inviting me to an ASEAN center to uh, the vote of thanks. Uh, what, I, uh, what I see 
from the discussions in the three takeovers, the major takeovers, you know. This is just the first time I see a, a, a webinar on the review of ASEAN in the FTA. This is just the beginning, you know. And as you have seen from the presentations by four speakers, you know, if I may summarize, you know, what's uh, the takeaways. First is, uh, I see there is a good discussion happened on FTA and the one point from Indian side, the asymmetry of the tariff liberalizations is very much there, which is carried forward from, from 2010 when the ASEAN and the FTA was signed. And you all agree, you know, whenever you, whichever side you have taken, you know, if there is an asymmetry in the tariff trade liberalization, and if this is not corrected, it continued. So, so hopefully when we come with a new schedule of tariff liberalization, this asymmetry will be corrected. So on FTA, we discussed by many important points like Ms. Dinat spoke about very well elaborately, the steps, the challenges. Uh, it is not just in the goods and, and services. There are issues like utilization of trade routes, rules of origin, et cetera, et cetera. So on FTA, there are enough good discussions. Speakers also pick up the questions and also answered, you know, the both sides from India and Indonesia. Then also from uh, Dr. Lina, I know, and she spoke quite well and she explained the, the challenges coming from political scenario, unfolding global scenarios on security and strategic front. She also spoke about Indo-Pacific, blue economy initiatives, and, you know, the challenges that both India and Indonesia, you know, have been facing on the economy. Thank you very much. So, and then uh, the point number three, which is on the business, you know, Mr. Pranab Kumar, uh, you know, he spoke, he, he highlighted what the industry's needs about in terms of particularly the services sector. So when it comes to ASEAN pillars, I found that these three sets very much fit in into three pillars that ASEAN always talk about, security dimensions, economic dimension, connectivity dimension, people to people relations. So three pillars very much you know, discussed today's webinar. And these three are also India's uh, very prominent activist policy and three Cs, culture, connectivity, and commerce. Next year, we will be celebrating 30 years, and I'm sure uh, that this discussion is just the beginning. And both, both sides from India and Indonesia has talked about going towards a scoping, coming up with a scoping paper. And hopefully, uh, the scoping paper will be ready next year. And then that will lead us uh, for negotiations and, and completing the FTA review process. 2010, when the FTA came in place, there were many anomalies. There were many asymmetries. It didn't work well. Uh, in any way, FTA or trade relation or regional trading arrangements, they are certainly not a zero sum game. We need to wait and see. So ASEAN Indian FTA, which area actually presenting almost about a one and a half billion populations, 5 trillion GDP. This is just pre-COVID figure and huge middle class. So the, the FTA between them, which is just about 10% of global trade they cover. And 90% we can scale it up. So lots of, you know, we think the new opportunities, huge scope to expand. So with that, uh, I thank uh, the, the speakers, the panelists, the participants, Indonesia Mission in, in Jakarta, Indonesian uh, Foreign Ministry uh, in, uh, back in, uh, in Jakarta, Indonesian Mission in Delhi, External Affairs Ministry and ASEAN India Center, RIS. Uh, for organizing this very important webinar. Uh, thank you very much. Namaskar from my side. Salam Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Dr. Prabirde, distinguished speakers and participants. I think it is my privilege to propose a formal vote of thanks on behalf of Indonesian Embassy in New Delhi and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia. I would like to take this opportunity to thank distinguished and excellent speakers our Chair, Dr. Prabirdi, uh, Director Dina Kurniasari, and Dr. Lina Alexandra of Indonesia, as well as Director Indunair and Mr. Pranav Kumar of India for sparing your time and share your precious thought and in-depth analysis with us. Our heartfelt thanks also are also due to our Ambassador uh, Sumadi Brotodinigrat. Uh, 
and then Ministry of Trade of Indonesia, CSIS of Indonesia, AICRIS India, CII India, and Ministry of Commerce and Industry of India for inspiring us in organizing uh, today's discussions. Uh, we are grateful and thankful to all participants who have come not only from India and Indonesia, but also from other part of Asia, Europe, America, and for your active participation. Uh, we, myself, uh, love the energy of the discussion, of course, and we thank you all for your thought-provoking questions and comments that enrich the discussion, of course. And from the panel, we have learned the importance of ASEAN-India Free Trade Agreement Review by identifying some key interests of Indonesia and India, a takeaways and actions to enhance both countries' economic engagement and produce some recommendation for the review process. So uh, Indonesian people often describe the outstanding long relation with Indian people as in saying, far from the eyes, but close to the heart. So I believe uh, this, we believe that the strong connection and engagement among Indonesia and uh, India businesses, industries, researchers, and other stakeholders can even be more bolstered and extended. So, and for those of you who missed the, some of the session, you can watch our full discussion video on YouTube of KBRI New Delhi or Indonesian Language of Indonesian Embassy. Hopefully we can back together and have this kind of discussion in person very soon. Thank you all. Terima kasih, Dani Abad. Have a good evening, stay safe, healthy, and happy. Thank you.